Hi everyone, welcome to another one of our free Friday community classes where we get a chance to spend 15 or 20 minutes on one topic exploring plant spirit work, uh, green sorcery, the green art, all that good stuff. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, if you are returning, thank you so much for being here. Uh, you all make this very enjoyable for me and as we uh, are at the solstice today, uh, all the, you know, warm, fuzzy feelings of gratitude uh, to everybody who participates. So with that being said, let's get into our topic of the week, which is plant spirit deities. Now, lots of people have been asking me to do this class, and I think I will probably uh, either turn this into a course or do an advanced, advanced monthly class for the folks uh, over on Patreon. But I wanted to introduce you to the three that I have uh, the closest relationship. Every tradition in the world that has done uh, animist-based spiritual plant work certainly has spirits, deities, gods, heroes, ancestors that are over the art, that are over the craft, and help those of us who embody the craft to really refine what we do, to bless us from the other side, and to wake up the ancestral wisdom of plant medicine that courses through our veins uh, and lies strong in our bones. So whatever your tradition may be, whatever your cultural connection may be, uh, whatever ethnic angle into plant spirit work you may work, I guarantee somewhere out there, uh, there are patron deities, patron spirits that you can call on to help empower your work. Today, I wanna to talk about three. Uh, of course, we're gonna start the discussion with Ermid. Uh, then we are going to talk about the Diwosunu and then end with Viridios, the green man. Um, and so that in that order, who we're going to talk about. So first, Ermid is the penultimate goddess of herbal healing uh, from the Irish pagan uh, family of deities. I hate to say pantheon because that's a really hard... Uh, most of our Celtic pagan traditions are not so tidy as the, the Greco-Roman paganism. The pantheons are very hard to make. Uh, it's the lines between who's a hero, who's an ancestor, who's a god, who's a spirit of nature, very fuzzy, not so important. Uh, remember, ultimately, paganism is orthopraxic, not orthodoxic. It's what we do uh, that's important, not so much what we think or how we philosophize things. So. Ermid, the great goddess Ermid, uh, daughter of the established uh, Tuath de Danan, Jan Chekt, and her brother Miach. And as the story goes in lore, one of my favorite, favorite stories uh, revolving around a deity is that in a battle, uh, sort of different variations on how and why this happened, the father, Jan Chekt, accidentally or intentionally kills his son, Miach, and of course, uh, the sister, uh, Ermid, is heartbroken. And so, as a goddess who is already has a connection to uh, the earth and to growing things and to herbs and all of that, uh, she is doing her rituals of mourning at the grave uh, of poor Miach, and as her tears fall and sort of soften and fertilize the ground above where he is entombed, medicinal herbs start to sprout up. And what has survived in lore is that 365 herbs representing every part of uh, Miach's slain body emerge from the ground, exactly aligned to the part of the body where they have an affinity for healing. And so uh, Ermid takes off her cloak and lays it on the ground and harvests all of these herbs and lays them on her cloak exactly where they need to go using the cloak as kind of a map of the human form right and so she's creating this map uh, which is you know depending on how you understand the lore i like to think that it's uh, miach from the grave teaching her uh, from the the land of spirits these herbs right and you could you could look at it from many angles but that's how I like to approach it so she lays them out on the cloak her cloak uh, exactly where they should go 
And now we have this beautiful map of 365 herbs that relate so pinpoint to various parts of the body, functions, processes, um, until <laughs> the uh, angered uh, John Chex comes and sees what she has done. And in a fit of anger or jealousy or resentment, again, depending on the version of the lore, he picks the cloak up by the collar and shakes it out, uh, displacing all of the herbs uh, and kind of spreading them out across the sacred island of Ireland. So this is a cool story because it explains how many of the medicinal herbs uh, were spread out across Ireland, um, but it also establishes Ermit as a goddess of herbal healing because only she now knows where each of the herbs belongs on that map. Once uh, John Czech shakes it out and they go, you know, she's already harvested them off of Miak's grave, so the map is gone. But in her uh, deific mind, she has that map. So we, of course, uh, love to invoke her and pray to her and honor her as very much a patroness of our craft. Uh, one who, when we do not know where to look for the right herb for the job, or when we're having a hard time making the connection between ailment and herb, she is a very wise and responsive spirit uh, to invoke and to call into our work. Um, so, Aramid, uh, lots of fun stuff about her online, lots of folks working with her. Uh, there's even a, a journal, a zine, that I received from somewhere in the UK called Ermid's Journal that's just beautiful. Uh, so her name and her uh, presence is very much being um, honored as it's always been there, but also revived in a certain way and brought into a little bit more popularity within the uh, various extant traditions of uh, kind of Indo-European uh, herbal practices. So Ermid, check. Next, we have the Duo Sunu. This is going to go a little bit into the weeds for a lot of people because the Duo Sunu uh, are a pair of deities whose actual name we don't really know. Uh, that name, Duo Sunu, is reconstructed. Uh, linguists, very smart people, have reconstructed this name based on how their name shows up in traditions from Iceland and Ireland all the way to India, that entire uh, Indo-European world. So they are considered to be a proto-Indo-European deity. And they do show up in many interesting ways uh, in the lore of many of the Celtic lands, also in India, also in Iceland. They're kind of all over the place. The name Duo Sunu, again reconstructed proto-Indo-European, means sons of the god. Uh, the implication here being is that they are twin sons of the uh, sort of overarching uh, deity who watches over the cosmos, Deus Pater, uh, from whose name you may sort of hear Jupiter and Zeus and Zeus, uh, again, ancient deities here. So the Duosunu are twin brothers, and they generally either appear in the lore in the form of horses, or they are horse-headed, uh, as the Ashvins in India, or one of them is a boy and one of them is a horse, or both of them are boys that are horse riders, um, lots of different expressions of them. But the important thing here is that in many of the lore, the Duo Sunu and their different uh, expressions of sacred twins are often uh, a little bit looked down upon by the other gods because they are so wrapped up in humans. They love humans, they are present with us, they watch us, they help us, and so it makes them not as cool as some of the gods that can get a little lofty and are, you know, a little bit above the human drama experience. So uh, first and foremost, the Duosunu, these twin sons, are deeply connected to the humans, which is always nice for us because when we call on them, oftentimes they show up. Um, but as horses, they also have a connection to the grasses and the growing things that both nourish and heal. And in most of the lore that we piece together to figure out who these gods originally were before the Proto-Indo-Europeans moved out of the Caspian steppes and spread from Iceland and Ireland to India, 
um, we find that one of them is a little more martial and a little more protective, and the other is a little more earthy and softer and about healing. So we have one of the Diwa Sunu who protects and one of the Diwa Sunu who heals. And so they are earthy, present, involved gods that we can call on to bless our herbal work, uh, to bring us as horses carry in knowledge, um, and to bring us the protection and the healing that we look for when we do our herbal medicines. Um, if this concept of Proto-Indo-European deities is new to you, welcome. Fall down the rabbit hole. It's super, super cool. Uh, there are other videos that I've done about this, and you can find links in those videos to books and other YouTube channels of folks that uh, are smarter than me that go way off into this subject. It's very near and dear to my heart. So, uh, Dubo Sunu, check. Last but not least, uh, how could I not mention my personal patron, uh, who I refer to as Vridios, but we also call colloquially the Green Man, who is a very enigmatic figure that is generally seen to be a manifestation of pagan remnants in uh, broadly European spaces where the, the church took over and sort of implanted itself into sacred pagan areas. Uh, he was the face of nature, the spirit of nature that would not die, that the, the folk would not allow to be buried. And so he's considered by scholars more often than not to be a folk uh, being, a folk deity, uh, but there is no doubt that we have examples of him thousands of years old uh, in places like Iran and Turkey, um, all over the place. And whether he showed up spontaneously in all of these places or um, he's been passed around from one culture to another through the very normal uh, and positive animist process of syncretism, which is different than cultural appropriation. It's a different thing. Uh, we don't know. But what we do know is that he is a wild god, that he appears uh, to us as half human, half plant, with foliage growing from his orifices, uh, that he is the keeper of all plant knowledge. And this is how I have worked with him for years, that he is a liminal being who has one foot in the world of the human, one foot in the world of the plants, and acts to bridge the connection between them, much in the same way that other liminal beings like Pan, who is half goat, half human, uh, bridges the way between the wildness of animals and the wildness of human. Uh, the domestic potential of goat and the domestic potential of human, uh, the green man does the same with our plant allies. So he is very much uh, a good fit for those of us who do plant spirit work. Um, he, for me, is emerges, re-emerges rather, uh, mostly in artwork, again, often in Christian churches, at a time when his presence is, has been the most important thing because he shows back up as maybe a lost or ancient or forgotten ancient pagan deity at a time when capitalism and the industrial era sort of go into full swing. So as the human person starts becoming more and more divorced from their not only connection to nature, but their codependency, their inherent sacred relationship with nature, he shows up to remind us that there is green within our blood uh, and there is red hidden in the world of the green, that he is a path connector, right? So for those of us who are city dwellers, for those of us who feel uh, disconnected or alienated from nature or have lost our sense of being part of or integral to, this is a deity uh, who very much brings healing there. For me personally, I find him to be quiet. He teaches and guides not so much through uh, intense revelation like some of the other deities, but through nudges and through uh, clearing paths into wild spaces so that we can find our way back to these healthier, deconditioned spaces that we are meant to be. Uh, as people who are just as part of nature as bear, river, sun, 
rainstorm, right? So he is a deity whose presence is very important for us now. He knows the nature of all the plant spirits. He knows all their secrets, all their virtues, uh, and he is very much their protector. So uh, if the green man, Vridios in all of his many faces, is a being that you are interested in learning about, interested in knowing more about how I have worked with him uh, for many years, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I know that talking about deities and spirits kind of goes a little bit off the path of what we usually do here. So um, if you all tell me that this is what you want me to talk about, I'm really excited to talk about it. If not, we need to keep business as usual and keep on trucking. But the green man, so here we have Ermid, here we have Duo Sunu, here we have the green man, Vridios, three different spirits who are very active in the lives of people who are working with them right now, who are responsive, who have a deep connection to the green mysteries, the green arts, the craft of herbalism. Um, not just the knowledge of herbs, but the embodiment of working with plants, right? And so hopefully, one or all of them stand out to you as beings that you might be interested to learn more about and research and maybe uh, start a little relationship with one of them, whatever works for you. So uh, as mentioned, we have ongoing courses, new lessons come out every month, uh, every Monday. We have advanced classes that launch every month. We do Q and A sessions, all of that over on the Patreon. Uh, so if you like this content, if this kind of stuff interests you, if doing this deeper styles of plant spirit work uh, through the lens of an Indo-European paganism uh, flips your switch, floats your boat, uh, let me know with a like uh, and also come over and see us on Patreon because that's where really the fun stuff is happening. And until next time, take care.